You are listening to the Julie Parker Practice Success Podcast, where you discover management insights and strategies for your successful dental practice. There are also interviews with key people in the industry who have advice and services to help you and your team achieve great success. Welcome to this week's episode of the Julie Parker Practice Success Podcast. And the focus of today's episode is around planning for the coming year. A couple of reasons why I wanted this as the focus. Reason number one is that we are coming up, winding up this current financial year. And in just a very short few weeks, we've got the new financial year starting. And it's a tremendous time to reflect back over the past year, what's made us successful, what hampered that success, and make good plans for the coming year. So we do have a year of intention uh, for 2022-23 financial year. Of course, the calendar year is another fantastic opportunity to reflect over the past and plan for the future uh, when we're entering into a, a brand new year in the January. And so we've got these two opportunities every year to place tremendous intention behind what we do. The other reason I wanted to have this as a topic today is because Amina Basile of Dental Management Expertise and myself with our separate company, Dental Business Mastery, we are putting the final touches on our new course. It's a six week online course and it is called Design Your Annual Growth plan and it is specifically for dental practice managers and owners who do want to achieve a different level of success for the coming year and it's really a good idea to even plan for the current level of success that you've already achieved but you want to maintain if we don't make plans for the future of whatever level of success we're trying to achieve we are then at the mercy of whatever fluctuating influences there are in the dental practice space and we can sometimes suffer the consequences of those without truly realizing the impact on our bottom line until we get to the end of the year and the accountant gives us (laughs) our final year financial reports. Now the structure of the online course Design Your Annual Growth Plan This course, by the way, is starting the week of May 16th. And so if you are interested in finding out a little bit more about it, please do just go to the show notes and click on the link and it'll have all the details there. But the structure is based around five key questions. And these five key questions I learned from Sandy Roth. Sandy Roth, I've mentioned in the past, and I've certainly mentioned to the teams that I work with, she's, you know, kind of a unofficial mentor of mine. She's been a guru of mine in the past. She's an American woman who was on the speaking circuit for dental practice team communication, patient communication, leadership skills for many years, for decades actually. And she used to come out to Australia quite frequently. I think she may be retired now, but her wisdom is something that that has inspired me and that I've followed for many, many years. I still re-listen to her recordings over and again and continue, as we always do, to get more and more out of the content itself, depending on where we are in a particular point in our life, different things become relevant to us. And so re-listening to these inspirational people is always a good idea. Now, Sandy's five questions are absolutely ideal when you are making plans for the future. It helps you to truly create a plan, and that's what we've done within this annual growth plan online course. But let me share some elements with you, because whether you did the course or not, you will find these very interesting uh, plotting your path forward for 22-23 financial year. What these five questions are, where have we been where are we now where are we going how are we going to get there and what role will each one of us play in getting there now consider these five questions and we'll go through each of them in a little bit more depth now but answering these five questions with specific detail will create for you a plan for success moving forward no matter what time of the year it is and of course we use these hallmark times of 
July for the start of the financial year and January for the start of the calendar year as wonderful opportunities to get plans rolling. But of course, start your planning anytime. Your annual plan can start January, February, March, April, it doesn't matter. We are just further assuring our success if we actually do make those plans and then make plans to stick to those plans as well. So let's have a look at these five questions in a little bit more detail. Where have we been? Now, sometimes this is a relevant question. Sometimes it's not a relevant question. If you have a dental practice that has been quite consistent with the team members that you've got involved, quite consistent with the way you market, advertise, promote your services, the type of services that you offer, the structure, the operations of your practice does has not really changed that much over the last few years, then maybe where have you been or where have we been then maybe where have we been is not as relevant for your practice. However, with the COVID situation, I think the where have we been starts to play a bit more of a role. So when we are looking at what we can try to achieve for the future and we're looking at where we are right now, then where have we been can play a role in explaining where we are right now and why our goals for the future are relevant. So your practice may have been functioning absolutely beautifully. It may have been a highly cosmetic practice, for example, that did a lot of veneer work and everything was looking very rosy in terms of revenue and the systems that you had in place. And then COVID hits and the restrictions hit. And whereas some dental practice could continue on seeing urgent and emergency work, they were still generating an income. However, if you were a practice that were really doing a lot of cosmetic work and you weren't able because of the restrictions to continue doing that kind of work, the figures that you would have achieved for the past financial year will be far below what you have achieved in the past. And so when you're starting to make plans for the future and you're reflecting on let's build on what, we, what we've achieved so far to date, you can start to see the relevance of where have we been. And there's explanations around why we are at the space where we are at now and why we need a big jump rather than just a subtle jump forward for the coming financial year. And so where have we been can also play a role in if your practice has gone through any big major fundamental shifts. Maybe there's been a large staff turn turnover. Maybe you've added a surgery, done renovations, and your staff group, your team has grown quite substantially. Maybe you've changed locations and you've done a new fit out. Maybe you've had a split in partnership within the practice itself. And so now the structure of the practice looks quite different. There are any number of reasons why the where have we been question could be relevant to answer as the very first point in developing your annual practice plan, your annual growth plan. So do consider that. The very next question of where are we now is so crucial before we start planning for success. We need to know what we've achieved to date with quite a bit of clarity to understand what kind of goals we're going to set for the coming year. You may have all heard of SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, the S meaning specific, the M meaning measurable, the A meaning achievable, the R meaning relevant, and the T in SMART meaning timely. So a timeline is put onto our goals. In order for us to have any chance of achieving a particular goal, if we make sure it's a SMART goal, so therefore meets that criteria, then we are more likely to achieve that because we've put in place a realistic goal. And to understand what a financial realistic goal is for your practice, you need to know what you've achieved to date. Otherwise, you may be really just plucking a figure out of the air that feels good in the moment, but given your current resources and what you've currently achieved and what you're capable of, that ha if that hasn't been taken into consideration, the goal might end up being a little bit too lofty. So finding out where we are right now and where we are right now are going to include the specifics around not just how much we have turned over, but what made up that turnover? What services did we provide last year that all accumulated into that financial turnover? How many working days, working sessions did the practice do as a whole? And then breaking that down to each particular provider, how many productive hours did they have? What services were they contributing to that turnover? And what their hourly rates, what sort of hourly rate were they generating? 
When we discover all of that, we can start recognizing out of all the resources that we have established already and taking it taking into consideration any resources that we're going to be adding to that mix, such as maybe one of the practitioners is going to start doing Invisalign or you're opening extended opening hours. Maybe you're adding another surgery and so you've got more operational sessions available to you. And so recognizing where we are right now is not just the figures, but also assessing what resources have got us to this point in time. So when we utilize all those resources in the same way, or can we improve the performance even by 10% in each of those resources, what will our successful future end up looking like? What kind of goals are going to be realistic moving forward? And so the where we are right now really does play a very big role in this is a starting point. This is our baseline. It is from here we wish to grow. And so where we are right now is an important question to answer. The third question of where are we going? Now that we've figured out exactly where we are, what resources we have, we can as a group or as a leadership team or as a practice owner or manager, identify where are we going to? Considering all the expenses we had last year and what our expenses are going to look like for the coming year, this is financially how, what, how much money we need to make to get by. Add to that our profit margin, that's how much our financial goal is. However, we want to jump even higher with that financial goal, possibly because we are adding additional services, because we're bringing in a hygiene program and all the dentists' hourly rates will start to increase substantially. Our resources for the coming year look different from our resources from this from the year that we just had. And so these are the financial goals that we have moving forward. Another element of where are we going and the other kind of goals that we can have are team-related goals and patient-related goals. And so a team-related goal could be we've been developing some disharmony amongst the team members. And so our goal moving forward is to improve the team harmony, improve team communications, increase the level of caring that we have for one another and develop systems to support that and a way of tracking that moving forward. You may also choose to have patient related goals and so we're going to have uh, more of our avatar, our ideal patient being attracted into the practice. We're going to be increasing the number of new patients that we have. We're going to be improving the standard of customer service that we are providing to our patients and so they may be business related goals with the turnover, they may be team related goal, they may be uh, patient related goals, they may even be leadership related, related goals for the practice manager and the owner as well that they want to really start focusing on developing the skills that are required to do that role even better. You may have a combination of all of the goals as well. And there are ways of creating plans moving forward with a varying number of goals and still not have overwhelm go on for the team that you can remain on track with each of these goals and achieve the success that you've planned for for the year. So where are we going is that bright shiny light, that's that vision, that's the goal that we're all going to work towards and quite often that's where we stop. You think about New Year's and we have these lovely goals that we put in place. I'm going to read more. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to spend more time with friends and family. I'm going to change my career. I'm going to save more money from my paycheck every week. And we do the same within dental practices too. We're going to improve. We're going to improve in these specific areas. But then all of a sudden... January turns into March, turns into June, and we haven't done anything to make sure these things happen. And so that's the answer to the next question. How are we going to get there? And this is where we break everything down. This is our goal. Now, how are we going to try to achieve that goal? And these are the strategies that we're going to be using. So we start to identify specific strategies that will help us achieve our specific goals. Using the example of New Year's, if I said to myself, that's it, my goal is to, I'm going to read more books this coming year. One of the strategies that I can use is to ask friends and family for book recommendations and actually buy at least 12 books for the coming year with the goal of getting through one book every month. Another strategy could be to join a book club. And so you do these sort of things with the goals that you've established for your dental practice. 
We're going to achieve a higher revenue. That's the goal. What's one of the strategies that we're going to use for that? One of the strategies could be we haven't increased our fees for the past couple of years. We're going to increase our fee list. Another strategy could be we're going to start becoming more efficient in our appointment book management because there seems to be a lot of unscheduled times. Lost 15 minutes here, lost, lost half an hour there. So we're going to tighten up our appointment book. That's one of the other strategies. Another strategy that we can put in place is increasing the patient conversion into actual appointment times. And so we're converting more treatment plans that we've discussed with patients into actual appointment times to get that done. And so you identify these different strategies that you can put in place to reach the goals that you've identified as a practice. And then you keep working backwards from there. So we've got the goal, we've got the strategy, but then for each strategy, actually identify the specific actions, the specific tasks that need to take place in order to activate the strategy. For example, with the book club, I've got the strategy of a book club. So what do I need to do to make sure that that strategy actually rolls out? I need to research and find out where the book clubs are, which one's going to suit me, actually select one of them, contact them, find out when they meet, check it with my schedule. If it all works, I'm then going to join that book club. So too with a revenue goal. And one of the strategies we're going to use to increase our revenue is to increase our fee list. So what needs to be put in place, what action steps need to be taken to make sure that we activate that strategy. Let's get the receptionist to print off the current fee list and hand it over to the practice manager or the practice owner. And then they are going to go through every item number and increase it by, for example, at least CPI. And then we're going to get that list and hand it back to the receptionist. They're going to load the new fee list into the computer program. And then we've activated that strategy. And we do this task list for every single strategy. And a great way of remembering that little pathway is GST, goods and services tax. It normally means, but in this world, <laughs> it is goals, strategies, tasks, GST, goals, strategies, tasks. And that is how we answer the question of how are we going to get there? We determine our GST. That's the how we're going to get there. And then the fifth question, the fifth Sandy Roth question, is what role will each one of us play in getting there? This is a crucial step. Otherwise, we've got a whole bunch of tasks there for all of our strategies, and no one is claiming complete responsibility and accountability for getting the things done. <laughs> and so what role will each one of us play in getting there? You think about the role, for example, of each particular team member. If the strategy and the tasks within the strategy are to improve, increase the treatment plan acceptance rate, at that point, we are clearly identifying specific expectations on each team member and what they can do to help activate this strategy, to help achieve this goal. Then each one of us understand which tasks are ours, when we have to get them done by, what we can do to help support other people getting their tasks done. Everyone knows what's expected of them. Now, it might be worthy of throwing in a sixth question there, and that sixth question is, what are we going to do to make sure we're getting there? <laughs> and this is really encouraging you to put into your Google calendar, your physical calendar, your appointment book schedule, wherever you have your important staff meeting information, add in there your goals achievement meetings. Meet every single month. Every single month, you've got the practice manager and the practice owner there at the very least, assessing whether you are achieving the goals, hitting your targets, your monthly targets of achieving those goals every single month. So you can start making modifications, taking different actions if it's needed, if you're not achieving the goals that, you're, that you have set out in your annual growth plan. You know, the establishment of goals and then progressing through the year and months later, realizing you're nowhere near to achieve the goal that you put out can be really disheartening and demotivating. And not just demotivating for you, but demotivating for the whole team if they are indeed all involved in what the plans for the practice are. 
when we work incredibly hard, it is wonderful to see evidence of that hard work in terms of your turnover or the increased uh, harmony of your team members or the impact on the dental patients when you've improved in the patient experience and customer service. To see the evidence of your labor is wonderfully motivating. And when you get on this momentum roll of achieving monthly success that's going to culminate in your yearly success, you'll be amazed at how much more you jump out of bed with greater enthusiasm. You'll be amazed how much more aspirational you will be with your coming annual goals. It's a different world. You swing from feeling like you're beating your head up against a brick wall and seeing no fruits of your labor to these wonderful feelings of accomplishment and inspiration and that anything is possible for your practice. And indeed, anything is possible for your practice. As long as you are establishing SMART goals, as long as you are establishing that plan of how to get there, delegating responsibilities to each specific team member and having a check-in process every month to make sure you are monitoring where things are at on a regular basis throughout the year. Anything is possible for your practice. So look forward to July. Do the planning. You don't want to hit July and then start doing planning because it takes about a month sometimes to get all the plans in place. Start planning now for your wonderful success for the next financial year. Take a hold of it, grasp it with both hands, get your team on board and all of you together move towards this bright, shiny future. I sincerely wish you the very best with it. If you are interested in the Design Your Annual Growth Plan delivered by Dental Business Mastery, myself and Amina Vasile, do go to the show notes. The link is right there. It's six weeks. It's an online program. It can be done on demand anytime. Once it's launched, it's available to anybody to start up anytime throughout the year. But if you start with us by May 16th, you'll go on that six week journey with us where we meet every single week for one and a half hour live sessions where we step you through the whole program and help you collate the data so you know exactly where you've been, where you are right now and where you are going. And we've got a whole bunch of downloads and Excel documents and things for you to plot your annual growth plan and get a very clear picture of what your practice and the people within your practice need to do every day moving forward to make sure that you do achieve the success that you want. If you have any questions about today's episode, please feel free to contact me anytime, julie at julieparkerpracticesuccess.com.au. I look forward to speaking with you next time. Have a great day. Hey, if you enjoyed listening to this episode, you should join the club. The club members receive an online lunch and learn twice a month where I share insights, systems, and strategies to improve the success of your practice. These lunch and learns could not be easier to train your dental team. They are recordings, so you can watch them at a time that suits you. For example, during team lunch times, pay your team members for their lunch hour. The first half hour, they're eating and watching the presentation. The second half hour, they're discussing how to implement this particular insight into your dental practice operations. And remember my favorite quote, it's by Archilochus, and he states, we do not rise to the level of our expectations, but fall to the level of our training. So join the club now and start upskilling your team members and improving the operations of your dental practice. I hope to see you there.